Hello everybody, I'm going to do a small art haul today. I've been seeing that Roman Schmalls watercolors have been talked about lately. I didn't get all the new colors, but I did buy a classic Jane Blundell set that she put together because she usually puts in colors that can be mixed in the most useful colors into a palette. So that's what I got in this. I'm going to do an unboxing with you and we will see just exactly how it looks because I am new to Roman Schmall. So I haven't even opened this yet. Not even a little bit. So we'll just see how it goes. How long it goes. I got my trusty little snap knife here okay and that is all I ordered in this box so it comes like that Aquarius metal box and it says that the colors were selected by Jane Blundell extra fine watercolors 24 pans okay so let's look at Oh, here on the back, it gives her swatches. Let me zoom in on those so you can see. I have a little bit of glare here, so I apologize for that. Let's turn that over so you can see. It looks like there's Buff Titanium, Hansa Yellow Medium, which is my yellow of choice. Quinacridone Gold, which I choose that as well. Aquarius Orange, Pyro Scarlet, Pyro Rubing, Quinacridone Red. I choose Quinacridone Red a lot. Mineral Violet. I had a sneeze there, excuse me, but I'll start where I think I was. Quinacridone Red. Mineral Violet, Ultramarine Intense, Cobalt Cerulean Blue, that's interesting, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Cobalt Turquoise, Thalo Green Blue Shade, that's interesting, Pyroline Green, Aquarius Green, Sap Green Light, Gold Ochre, Geothite, Mummy Transparent Red, Blue Ridge Burnt Sienna, Indian Red, Cypress Burnt Umber, Cypress Raw Umber, Cypress Raw Umber Deep, and Shadow Gray. So we'll open these and take a look at the packaging. They come wrapped in plastic, nice. Shrink wrapped. I love the box. I think it's really beautiful. Let me zoom that out a little bit. Love the packaging. I love that box. All right. It's a sl sleeve. And it comes wrapped in plastic again. And your typical black watercolor box. Roman Schmall labeling. I'm going to keep this so I can put it away nicely and protectively. And let's open the... I'm going to swatch these in my painter's color diary so we can get a really good sense of how the paints re-wet. Okay, there's a swatch card in here. Feels like 100% cotton. It says Aquarius selected by Jane Blundell. She is a she is an expert on pigments. So when I need reference, I always go to her website and I'll link that website in the description below. There is no affiliation between me and Jane Blundell. I just really 
I think she is just really knowledgeable on her pigments. Okay, so that is good to know. We'll swatch them here as well. I may not swatch them on here. Eventually I will, but not maybe not today. Oh, and they don't come wrapped. So I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting them to come individually wrapped. Some of them are a little loose. Maybe that's part of the reason they're not as expensive. Let's see if they're in order. Buff Titanium, Hansa Yellow, Quinacridone Gold, Aquarius Orange, Pyro Scarlet, Pyro Rubin, Quinacridone Red, Mineral Violet, Ultramarine Intense, Cobalt Blue. Let's see if and this is, says Thalo Blue Green Shade. This has a little bit of a kind of like a oh, I don't want to call it glitter, but it has a sheen on the top. Kind of like it has a additive. That's unusual, isn't it? Can you see that? I think you can. That's unusual. They're not labeled on the sides. This pan is stained. So that's interesting. This would be cobalt turquoise. They love green blue shade the pans are stained I don't know maybe it's maybe it's because they were hand filled pyroline green aquas green sap green light gold ochre geothite mummy transparent red blue ridge burnt sienna Indian red cypress Burnt Umber, Cypress Raw Umber Deep, and Shadow Gray. Okay. They do all go over. You could put another full pan. Let me double check and see if that's true. Yes, another full pan would fit. in these so if you wanted to buy four more colors you know that would be they would fit into this oh gosh now i can't get it out need some there it go okay so let's go ahead and swatch these out i'm going to use a Princeton Velvet Touch number eight round. We will see how they reactivate. Let's see if I can take this off. This is kind of bothering me. I think there's some way you can. I'm not for sure. I'm going to have to mess with that. I've seen people do it. So we'll just put this here. And I'll lay that there. And we'll swatch them out. I want to get them all in frame for you. Okay, so let's start with Buff Titan. Oh, they are activating immediately. 
I don't know if you can see that or not. I barely had to touch it. Buff Titanium, PW6 colon one. I've got my paper towel here. And this is Hansa Yellow Medium. And I'm not, I did not pre-activate any of these. Oh, nice. Nice pigment load. I just tab my paper. I'm not going in with a lot of water either. Quinacridone Gold. Mmm. That's a nice Quinacridone Gold. It's made like Daniel Smith's made with PY150 and PO48. Okay, now this is Aquarius Orange. I just went twice to get pigment. Nice. I'd have to think how I would do an, use an orange other than a pumpkin, which I may paint a pumpkin with these to see how they flow. Pyro Scarlet. These have no trouble activating at all. And Pyro Rubin. which is similar to an alizarin crimson color. I think this is 100% cotton paper, but it has a weird texture to it. Oh, look at that quinacridone gold going into that orange. There's quinacridone red. I'm going to give it two swipes like I've done the others. Pretty. All right, let's see. Mineral Violet. Really nice violet color. Did two swipes, so that's what I'm going to base it on. One, two, and the color payoff I get. Oh! That's a nice ultramarine. It says ultramarine intense. And this says cobalt cerulean blue. And it's PB36. One, two. Almost one to swipe again. So I'm going to have to look and see. Cobalt. And if cobalt and cerulean are the same pigment number. Okay, here's this phthalo blue-green shade. And it's the one that had the purple sheen on the top. One, two. It's phthalo blue. Oh my goodness. I wonder why it had that purple sheen on top. It was almost like a metallic. Now I'm going to have to see once it dries if it continues to be that way. I've never noticed that on a pig, uh, single pigment paints before. Okay, here's cobalt turquoise. That's not as strong as I thought it would be. That was kind of a weak payoff. Now here's Thalo Green Blue Shade, which I expect this to be very intense. It is. That's a good mixer color. Okay, here's Pyroline Green. That's a dark, foresty green. That's really nice in landscapes. Aquarius green. Oh. That's 
nice. I really like that. That's sort of like a like a deep sap or something. Okay, this one is Sap Green Light. Okay, I see why it's called Light. Okay, next one is Gold Ochre. I'm wanting to think about this. And, and see if that gold ochre is not very strong. I'm wanting to think about these and how I would use them and how I would mix them. Okay, here's geothite. Not very strong. Let me go after it again and see... Okay, that one might have to be activated. That's better. Now that I went in after it was wet. But the first time, let's go see if this gold ochre has a little bit more of a payoff. And it does. After you wet it. Okay, down here we have Mummy Transparent Red, one, two. And what I think I'll do is I think I'll go back and put a glaze over it. That kind of reminds me of a burnt sienna. This next one says Burnt Sienna, one, two. That's a nice payoff. Nice, strong Burnt Sienna. So that and your Intense Ultramarine would make a nice, nice gray. Okay, now we're going to go to Indian Red. There is some dust on these it shouldn't make a whole lot of difference in your paintings okay this and then oh that's nice and I can tell that's going to be nice and opaque that just took a little bit for activation I, I just one two cypress Burnt Umber, one, two. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice Burnt Umber. I like just a chocolate brown for a Burnt Umber. Here is Cypress Raw Umber Deep. One, two. And that's a nice cool brown. But it doesn't have a real high payoff on the first round. Now let me go in since it's wet and see if I can get a little bit more. And I can. Okay, so some of these earth tones might need a little push. But that's okay because they tend to be harder in nature one two this is shadow gray last one and that's a nice Payne's gray okay now let's go back are these dry I think they are let's go back and get some that buff titanium that is easily lifted. Let's get some of this Hansa. It's so bright and intense anyway. I like Hansa Yellow Medium. Here's Quinacridone Gold. 
I think I got a little bit too much water on my brush. And here's, let's get a little water. Aquarius Orange. Nice. Seems to be nice and transparent. I'm going over some of these numbers. I know I didn't on that 201 Buff Titanium. Pyro Scarlet. One, two. It's nice and transparent most of the time. And Pyro Rubine. Rubine. Rubine, Rubine. Rubine. That's pretty. I would say that's going to be your color to mix with phthalo blue because it's going to be more of an intensive color. Although you could use your quinacridone red. It's just not as intense. Mineral violet. Nice. It'll be interesting to see how quickly these wear down, too. Because it just seems like Daniel Smith lasts forever. Cobalt Cerulean. I got me a little fly in here. Trying to get out of the cold weather. And phthalo blue. And it seems to me like that sheen is not coming back on. Cobalt turquoise. Hmm, that cobalt turquoise is an interesting color compared to my Daniel Smith cobalt turquoise. One, two, phthalo green, blue shade, pyrolane green. They're glazing nice without lifting up the color from below. Now we're going to aqueous green, Aquarius Green. That is really pretty. I am not paid by anything. I bought these paints with my own money. And these are my own opinions. And I'm always kind of comparing paints to the paint I love the most, which is Daniel Smith. But I do not use only Daniel Smith. I use other paints. And otherwise, why would I buy these? And I have a bit of a problem with... Loving art supplies. Fear of missing out. Geothite. That, those two colors might have to get at them a little bit more. Mummy Transparent Red. Yeah, they're, I could see where this might be interesting for skin tone. And this Blue Ridge Burnt Sienna. That's a nice Burnt Sienna. That Indian Red is very opaque. I mean, that's like a gouache to me. I don't use Indian Red much. Cypress Burnt Umber. Nice Burnt Umber. Cypress Raw Umber. I'm going to go at it a little bit more. 
that's a really nice cool brown and shadow gray okay let me get a sketchbook and we'll do a little painting Okay, so now I'm going to take the tape off and see how this turned out. This is like the best part. This is in my favorite sketchbook and it's just washi tape, so it should come off fine. Okay, there's our pumpkins for the season. Now, I think that these paints did really well. I'm really happy with them. I'll sign this. And date it. It's October of 23. I really think looking up close, looking down on the painting, I'm not liking it very well. But looking at it in the monitor, it looks better. So that was one tip that I thought was really helpful in my workshop was to always step away and quit before you think you're finished and always look at your work from a distance or in a mirror because sometimes your iPhone will collapse the colors and collapse the painting so you don't get the depth that you need to fix any mistakes. So I am going to post it as is I might put a few highlights in it after I look at it for a day or so, but these paints are wonderful. I think they're really good, good paints, and they are a little bit more affordable than Daniel Smith. They mix really well, and I'm going to keep using them. I think that it's a good selection. I really love that geothite. Daniel Smith has a geothite in their 24 set as well. And that's 
probably because Jane Blendell designed that color palette too. So thanks for joining me guys. Hope you have a nice fall, fall harvest season. See you later. Bye.